Today we're going to be installing Fedora 35 on the Framework laptop. First we're going to press the F2 button to get into the BIOS. First time booting your framework, it's going to take a few minutes to be able to actually check the RAM. So it'll be a black screen, but as we can see here, F2 will bring up the BIOS. There are a few things that we need to check in here. So we're going to use the right arrow on the keyboard to go to the Advanced tab. Then click Enter on the CPU configuration. Then we want to make sure that the Intel VMX virtual technology is set to enable. This will give us the ability to host virtual machines on the laptop. You can back out of that menu by clicking the escape key and it'll bring you back to your main menu. Use your right arrow keys on your keyboard to go to the security tab. Use your arrow buttons to go down to the secure boot and click enter. And use your arrow keys to go down to the enforce secure boot. Click the enter and change it to disabled and then click enter again. Then click right on your arrows on your keyboard to exit tab. Use your arrows to go down to the exit saving changes. I hope you all had a good weekend. I know I did. From here, you'll want to plug in your bootable I thumb drive. In this case, we're using a Venn toy, which we'll cover later on. Otherwise, a bootable thumb drive will work. Once you reboot your laptop, we'll proceed to install Fedora 35. In this case, we're using Ventoy, so we have multi ISOs on here. We're choosing Fedora Workstation 35. If you've never installed Linux before, this text on screen is normal. It'll take a minute or two for it to load. So we're accepting for it to check the disk to make sure it's working correctly and all the valid ISO is there. So this will take a minute or two at counting up. After that, it actually starts the normal text that you would see booting for Linux. Sometimes this is hidden behind a graphic, this time it's just loading via the terminal, which is completely normal. As long as there are no errors on screen, then you should be fine. Then it'll pop up and give you this option to either try Fedora or to install the hard drive. We're going to go ahead and click the install to hard drive option here, and we'll give it a second to boot and bring up those install options. So in this case, you're going to want to pick your language and then click continue. Then we're going to go to our device installation disk, go custom and click done. From there, we're going to let it automatically create our installation, which is using ButterFS by default. As you can see, the home and the root drive or this slash are the same file size. That's one of the pros about ButterFS is that it's sharing that. So when we're done here, we can go up to the corner and press done. And then we're going to accept the changes that are made here. Uh, we need to go through, I'm just checking to see if Wi-Fi is around. It looks like it sees the Wi-Fi card. So we'll check that a little bit later. Let's click the time and date. And I'm gonna choose Los Angeles for my time. And that's just about all I need at this point. So we can press the begin installation. From here, we're gonna speed things up. Uh, so it's sped up by 400% on the video, but the total install time for Fedora started at 2114 and it goes for about four minutes for it to be able to go through and install. At this point, you can pretty much walk away, get yourself a cup of coffee and just relax for a few minutes. The front end work, it's installing the software, then it grabs and installs the bootloader. Now, you can also change options and set yourself up to have an encrypted hard drive. It's just not there by default. So if you want to do that, I can make a video on that in the future. Otherwise, this is just finishing up and then we can click the finish installation button. We can see it's 21. It just turned 2118. So a handful of minutes. You can click the finish configuration. From here, we can go up to the top right hand side and click the power off or log off. So let's hit the power off. We can see the text on screen and then let's go ahead and remove the thumb drive because we're all done here. And we can see the light in the top right hand side just shut off, meaning that it turned off. We can press it now to turn the machine on. And we've got the booting time. I'm hitting the delete button because I had the slow boot disabled. I re-enabled that as soon as I was done doing this video. 
but otherwise this boots right up into Fedora 35 and the first time installation. So it's welcome to Fedora 35. You can go through and click your Wi-Fi. I've blurred this out just to have the privacy conscious to my neighbors and myself. I'm turning off the location services and automatic problem reporting. I'm turning on third party repositories. And then this is just a generic account that I put different places. So this is the lab bot and I'm just going to set a really bad password on the video because as soon as this video is done, I wipe format reinstall and made new accounts. So this is just the password of password. It tells you it's a horrible password. So now we can click start using Fedora. It says, hey, welcome to GNOME 41. If you've never used it before, let's take a tour. So to start the tour, hit the start button. To, so you can hit the meta key or the windows key to get the overview and search for things. Just start typing to search for things. You have different workspaces you have when you're working with a laptop. Up and down for the overview is the three fingers, which feels really good on this. And left and right are your workspaces or virtual desktops. With that, you're good to go with GNOME 41. Press close and you're good to go. From here, I'm just going to open up a terminal and then I'm going to open up top which is the terminal based uh, task manager, if you will, if you're used to Windows. And on the display, I just wanted to show you the display is 2256 by 1504 and it's 60 Hertz by default. Out the gate, this works. Thanks for watching my video and hope to see you in the future.